Come gather round the campfire and hear our ghostly tales of chilling terrors, darkest woes, and anything that goes bump in the night. So cuddle up with your best friend or dare it alone. The darkness is closing in and spirits are calling your name. This is Fireside Phantoms. Guess what today is? Oh my God, what is today? Today is another edition of Paranormal and Paranoid News. Congratulations. I'm so paranoid right Th- now. Thanks for being Just here. thinking about it. <laughs> you should be paranoid because what I got to talk to you about today is mostly just paranoid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Okay, cool. How are you at Conspiracy Theories? I have heard a a lot of conspiracy theories. I'm not sure I buy into conspiracy theories, but I think it's always good to question things. I have got a lot for you on conspiracy theories. Um, This is going to be fun. Like you, I know um, kind of, I don't know a lot of deep details about a lot of them, but I know the gist of most of them. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who know the deep details, um, you're going to be disappointed because I'm just going to go over a few of them. Maybe I can help add <laughs> yeah, some you, of that. Yeah, you probably know maybe more details on some of these. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, U.S. Direct, which is a direct TV dealer, mm-hmm. went ahead and pulled together a really interesting study. And this is what I found. Um, That's why I'm doing the story. They put together a really interesting story where they went through Reddit. They scoured Reddit. I love Reddit. Yes. This is all about Reddit. And they looked for the most discussed conspiracy theories that there are. And they took the top nine. Then they went to Google and they figured out which conspiracy theories were the most popular in each state. Here we go. Starting with the most researched conspiracy theory according to the study. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. The New World Order. Yeah. Yeah. Come on down, New World Order. Get your trophy because you're number one. What's funny with the New World Order is that nobody really knows who they are. They just say they. Well, the New World Order. There is a idea of who it is, Um, but there's no concrete evidence, of course, to to show you for sure this is who it is. So this order is pretty chaotic then. The order is, well, I don't know, because you're not supposed to know what happens. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe it's very orderly. I don't know. I don't know. Um, But anyway, for those of you who do not know what the New World Order is, it's actually a shadow government at work right now. Um, Their whole thing is they are filled with the most elite people of the world And their idea is to control and manufacture events in order to manipulate the populace into one world authoritarian government, therefore dissolving the separate nations. They want one world government. That's what they're going for. Mm. So that's why they're called the New World Order, because they want all of us to be under the same rules, the same regime. That way it's easier to control the mass population and there's no diversity of nations. There's just one nation. That is it under God in, in liberty and the pursuit of justice. No, that's yeah. not, that's not what I'm trying to say. But so, they just want one con- one nation. Right. Essentially. One, one world under one governing one body. One governing body. And they're, they're trying to get us to choose this on our own accord. They're using propaganda. They're creating systemic ideologies and controversies in order to persuade people that giving up their liberties is a good idea. The group that runs the New World Order is actually known as the Cabal. The or Cabal. The Cabal. Or the Illuminati. The Illuminati. Or, in my opinion, Cirque du Soleil. Circus Soleil, that is definitely a yeah, good contender. I think so, because it's all about illusion. Mm-hmm. And so is Cirque du Soleil. And how do those people bend their bodies like that? Contortionism. Clearly, clearly, they got access to something the rest of us don't have. And once you go watch a Cirque du Soleil show, you're never the same again. So it's got to be... It's hard for you to say that, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, Circa, circus that's not funny. Story. Everything is hard for me to say, Carol. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not even a joke. <laughs> I love that show. I have to see that show every time see? they come into town. You're already buying into the, I, mean, I bet you gave over your credit and card I, information the second I, you walked in the door. I didn't did. You, I, I always get mm. cotton candy, too. Exactly. The New World Order treat. <laughs> It's also that part of it. Eats. It's also part of the brainwashing. Okay, good to know Carol's lost. She's going to be part of the Illuminati now. <laughs> so the Illuminati, or the New World Order, if you will, is comprised of the people that you already see in power, like politicians, entertainers, and other famous figureheads. And though they may present a positive face to the public, they are really behind the scenes orchestrating ultimate power grabs all of the time. So, for example, one of the big conspiracy theories that they say came out of the New World Order is 9-11. Mm -hmm. 9-11 was considered to be an inside job either done by or allowed to happen by our U.S. government because it gave them an excuse to invade Afghanistan and to go to war with Iraq for oil. And it also helped secure the Patriot Act which allows the U.S. government to spy on your phone calls, read your mail, hide in your bushes, and crawl into your closet at night. That's why it's number one, because mm -hmm. it encompasses so many things. Yes, it does. And so many arms and legs. Yes, it does. That, and this is like the core, this is the, the torso of the conspiracy body. And have you seen that poster that has all the connections of the different groups, like yeah, the Trilateral Commission? Yes, yes, and, yeah. Foreign relations. Are you talking group about the poster the I bought group? for yes. our friend? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So did you, you say, have seen it? Did you yeah. did you say the Build a Bear different version? The Build a Bear workshop is part of this. <laughs> I thought you said the Build a Bear. I didn't know Build a Bear was on that. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I think that's the mascot for Bilderberg. <laughs> that's what you said, Bilderberg. I'd heard the Build a Bear. Bilderberg. <laughs> <laughs> Just been picturing all these demonic teddy bears well, <laughs> everywhere. <sighs> yes, they're taking over the world. I Holly. thought I could trust teddy you, bears. Teddy. God damn it. Anyway, 9-11 allowed the U.S. government to quickly and swiftly and without question pass the Patriot Act, which, of course, is designed to stop domestic terrorism. But it also allows them to, without question, go and eavesdrop on whoever they want. And that, of course, is a major red flag for a lot of Americans who are like, I'm sorry, but that is not OK. We have due process in this country. You need to back off and not just assume you can eavesdrop on my telephone calls without a court order. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is a good way to, but we're doing this for your safety. Uh, no, you're not. You're doing this to take away my freedoms. And that's a legitimate argument. Yeah, wasn't it um, the Nazis who had a very familiar phrase, and I can't speak it, but it basically said, for your safety. Yeah. This is for your safety. Yeah. And they said it in German. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's true. It gives credibility to those who believe this was an inside job because we needed an excuse to go to war and get oil. We needed an excuse to spy on all of our people. Like, it's it's a weird, creepy vibe. It really sure. ticked me off um, when I heard people saying that at first. Mm -hmm. um, I was really upset uh, because I just... Because the you're horror a... of it, mm -hmm. of thinking this was just an inside job or purposely done, yeah. was horrifying to me. Yeah, of course. But then looking at the documentaries that went around and <laughs> stuff, and especially Building 7 when that came down and right. that wasn't even hit, it was just it was weird. Weird mm -hmm. seeing yeah. that. Yeah. Like why? Uh, That's another extension off the 9-11 conspiracy is that why did building, building 7 go down? And a lot of people are suggesting that the government was trying to get rid of something in that building. And by just having it set up by the World Trade Center, um, it made it look like a natural uh, demolition, even mm -hmm. though they believe that they actually set off a bomb and it went down that way. I don't know. I, I don't think we'll ever know. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, but it is kind of weird that building collapsed. Yeah. There's a lot of engineers who say they can explain why and perhaps they're correct. But um, I don't I don't know, man. It's just bizarre. It's just a weird, weird thing. 
Yeah, a lot of questions without answers. And another fun little current extension off of the whole government spying is, of course, your beloved Amazon Alexa. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. We did that whole episode. Yeah, because, the you know, you watch the commercials and you're like, oh, my God, I can get this little bot and it'll it'll research anything I ask it to do. And I don't even have to be on a computer. And isn't this great? I can order my groceries. I can ask it what time it is. I can get the score on the football game. And it will report back to the government everything. I say and think and every conversation I have in my house because we all know Amazon is one of the biggest government contractors there is. <laughs> yeah. I think this all started with Furbies. Yeah. You know, the little Furby yeah, doll yeah, I remember. birds that would talk and they'd have those eyeballs looking at you Creepy. all the time. That is the New World Order. And the states that like to research the New World Order are as follows. Arizona, Alaska, Hawaii, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Minnesota, Iowa, Arkansas, Michigan, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Mm -hmm. Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, North and South Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia and Wisconsin. You know what would have been easier is just leaving out the states <laughs> that are not part of this list. It's over half the states in the country. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I know. I thought about that, too. I'm like, <laughs> I should just say, if you weren't called, then you believe in the New World Order. That's not what I should have done. Okay. So the next set of um, conspiracy theories actually is a three-way tie between chemtrails, flat earthers, <laughs> and, Carol, new coke People new are still Coke. talking about New Coke. Yes. Yes. What is, I have not heard this conspiracy. You haven't? Okay, we'll get to that one here in a few minutes. But yeah, New Coke is an old conspiracy theory from the 80s. So it's crazy. Okay. All, right. All right. So the first one I'll talk about is um, contrails, which is the waste that is left in the sky from an airplane. You see an airplane fly mm-hmm. by and you see all those puffy clouds that it leaves in the sky. Yep. That's actually um, called contrails or condensation trails, which are ice crystals that form cloudy lines from the airplane's exhaust and the atmospheric pressures. We all know what the truth is, though. Those cloudy lines are actually chemtrails filled with chemicals that produce sickness, changes in the weather, chemicals for biological testing, sterilization of our populace, and psychological control of the masses. Okay, so I've got to talk about this one a little bit. because I sure hope you do. I feel feel (laughs) like the sky, to me, growing up, and it could just be because we have more air traffic over us. Okay. But I really do feel the amount of contrails that you see behind a plane are just abnormally long okay. and thick and, fluffy. and just last forever in the sky, which doesn't really coincide with ice particles that would dissipate pretty quickly. And they some do of these, hang up there for quite a while. That's yeah. True. And some of these just seem to be, you know, showing a crisscross pattern just miles wide over and over and over again. I've just never seen anything like that growing up. Only yeah. the last few years I've been seeing this these patterns where you almost can't see the blue sky anymore sometimes mm-hmm. on certain days. And there's a lot of people who are like, I don't feel good today. There's a lot of chemtrails in the sky. It must be why. I know it's kind of creepy and weird to think that these airplanes are flying around above us and dropping chemical stuff into our air. But that's one of the the major conspiracy theories that people look up are are, um, chemtrails or as scientists like to refer to them as contrails. So the states that um, are interested in the chemtrails are, Carol? Oregon. Oregon. I knew it. Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, Louisiana, and West Virginia. I'm surprised Colorado's not on there. Colorado is coming. Okay. Okay. So the next one is the Flat Earthers. Woo! Come on down for your trophy, Flat Earthers. Boo, Flat Earthers. (laughs) Boo this. (laughs) I kind of think that this conspiracy theory is kind of fun. Okay. Um, Because they do not believe that the Earth is round. They believe it to be flat. What gave that away? (laughs) (laughs) So from LifeScience.com, Flat Earthers believe that Earth is just a disc. And at the edge of the Earth... 
is a 150-foot-tall Antarctic wall of ice that the employees of NASA monitor to make sure that no one climbs over and falls off the wall and into space. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love everything about it. A lot of the flat earthers believe that all the photos of Earth that have been shown to us have been manipulated to show the Earth as round and not flat, and that our GPS devices have also been tampered with to give the illusion that we fly in straight lines, but really we just fly in circles. I love the fact that they think that these NASA employees are monitoring this wall. <laughs> I just see a bunch of people in NASA gear sitting there and you think it's actually like the Houston Command Center, but really yeah. it's Antarctica and they're just watching the wall like in Game of Thrones. Like they're waiting for the, the, <laughs> the zombie, White Walkers. The, yeah, the White Walkers to show up and the Night King and they're just hanging out there and oh my God, here comes somebody. Let's make sure he doesn't fall off and like tell everybody what's actually going on. We don't want him getting back. I mean, it's perfect. And and so they believe that they're doing this because um, the government likes to tell us that we've gone to the moon and we have this big, hefty space program. But really, they're taking the money that we're supposedly giving to NASA for this and using it in other places, mm -hmm. making sure that no one finds out we're actually on a flat disk. But why would that be so bad? If we're on a flat disk, why do they have to hide that? Because they're trying to show that the money is being spent for space exploration and it's actually being used for other reasons. So they'd have to explain where oh. all that money is going. Okay, well, here's here's a really good question, you guys. Those people that believe flat Earth, I'd like to ask you, what other planet out there is flat? Or have they been They've all been manipulated, Carol. The, oh. Those planets don't exist. Wait. <laughs> What are you talking okay, about? Okay, thanks, Holly. I just solved all that. <laughs> I did. You're welcome. You should be their ringleader. You've maybe, got... maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's the other one? So um, the states that believe in flat earth are the following. Vermont, Utah, Colorado. Oh, Colorado, you really disappoint me. <laughs> Come on with all the military bases there. Yep. Wyoming and South Dakota. There oh. you go. Flat earthers, there you there you live. I really thought it'd be Kansas. It's so flat there. They, you yeah. know, they're looking for yeah. It would make sense if it's in the Midwest, right? And some sympathy and some yeah. So the next one is the new Coke theory, which I I I'm so fun. It's so funny that you um, aren't aware of this one because maybe it'll trigger your memory when I start to tell you this. Okay, okay, because I a lot of people, including myself, in the 1980s experienced PTSD when Coca Cola said they were pulling their old Coke formula off the shelves yes. and replacing it with new Coke. Yes, okay, I do know this. And okay. I was really mad because I loved classic Coke. Exactly. And Everybody I was really did. pissed off with yeah. new Coke because the new formula was going to taste a lot like Pepsi, too sugary. Exactly. And so... It the... didn't have cocaine in it anymore. <laughs> and that's no, what I'm we kidding. all really wanted was I'm the kid, cocaine. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. So that was the whole gist behind this is that apparently... Coke did a blind taste test okay. and they had people taste Coke and then they had them taste Pepsi and they asked them what they liked better. And I think Pepsi even did a whole advertising campaign around this that at, at the right. soda challenge that people like Pepsi over Coke and Coke got all freaked out, got their feelings hurt. And they were like, OK, fine. If people like Pepsi better, then we better change our formula. I have a song for that. Do you want to hear? I do. OK. Are you going to see this? <laughs> I'm trying to remember it here. Coca-Cola went to town. Pepsi-Cola shot him down. Dr. Pepper fixed him up. Now we're drinking 7-Up. 7-Up caught the flu. Now we're drinking Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew got a bug on his ear. Now we're drinking Dad's Root Beer. Dad's Root Beer got bit by a termite. Now we're drinking Dear Old Sprite. Dear Old Sprite began to croak. Now we're back to classic Coke. <laughs> Yeah. Did you just Woo. make that up? That's amazing. I am amazing. Thank that you. That was fucking hot. <laughs> we need to copyright that shit right now and start selling that. I, I, that I, that was fun. Um, made that up with a friend of mine jumping rope. <laughs> back when, so... back when Coke was changing their formula. Dude, that is a good memory, first of all. I never would have remembered that. Thank you. That's why that. I had to pause for a minute. So this is proof, honey, that I have a really good memory. You have a great Thank memory. You. That's so amazing. When, so when we go to Mandela Effect yeah. episode. <laughs> You're going to have to see if you remember it then. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Thank that you, That was Holly. super cool. Glad you guys enjoyed that. I love that. That was great. And just great. imagine a jump rope. Yeah, you know, totally. Boom, or boom, you could do the, the, the hand clapping games like, you know. 
Da, da, like, uh, see, I can't remember. Cinderella, what Cinderella, dressed in yellow, yeah. went downstairs to kiss a fellow. See, see, yo, play, may come, come out and play with, with me. That's and one. bring your dollies three, climb up my <laughs> apple tree. <laughs> yeah, we never down grew my up. Rainbow into my, my cellar dungeon door. door. Cellar door. Oh, dungeon. Dungeon comes later when it's your enemy. When you're I with. can perform bondage <laughs> on you. <laughs> yes, bondage is exactly what I remember saying, And things girl. take a dark turn in junior high, folks. Put Very on dark. my handcuffs and chain yourself to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Which happened. <laughs> oh my God, this is a paranormal comedy podcast, not a Shit. sex show. Sorry. Sorry, guys. We tend to um, we're gonna derail get when we're together sometimes, we but do. thank God for Josh. Thank you, Josh, for cutting all of that out. <laughs> anyway, back to New Coke. Coke got their feelings hurt. They they pulled. They were like, you know what? If the people of the world do not appreciate our soft drink, <laughs> we're going to pull it off the shelves and we're going to replace it with something that's Coke? more like Pepsi. And of course, when the new formula came out, known as New Coke, everyone started to drink it and they were like, what the fuck is this <laughs> that's right it's bullshit because we love coke we we especially like coke in a can coke is great mcdonald's coke is when the they when they started doing the bottles i didn't like it as much you mean the glass bottles yeah or the plastic bottles i think the plastic changes the flavor i like canned coke. i i like mcdonald's coke number one a little bit of the aluminum because, in there <laughs> yeah you gotta put, put some like alzheimer's stuff in there but mcdonald's is the biggest connoisseur of coke in the world or connoisseur the biggest seller of coke in the world and they have perfected the formula to carbonation ratio every time i go to a mcdonald's to get a coke it is so fresh and so good. It's so rare I get a bad Coke from McDonald's. I promise you we're not getting paid by McDonald's. We are not getting paid by this. McDonald's. I'm just letting you guys all know, if you want a really good Coca-Cola product, go to McDonald's and get it because that's where I usually go. But after that, I do like it in a plastic bottle. I don't drink Coke or Pepsi or Pop at all anymore. I will drink a Coke. After I realized I could pour Coke over my car battery and yes. move all the corrosive gunk yes. on it and actually revive my car Maybe battery. Maybe that's what we should have put in the conspiracy I, theory. I just stopped drinking Pop altogether. You're absolutely right point. about that. Coke is probably going to kill you someday. But yeah, you're right about that. It can do that too. But if you want the best Coke to kill you. Go to McDonald's. <laughs> Perfect. And then after that, I like it in a bottle. I don't like it in a glass bottle so much. And then the can's fine, too. The can's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, God, we got that figured out. After the Coke gets put out there on the shelves, everybody hates it. They're like, Coke, what are you doing to us? And Coke was like, oh, oh, shit. Okay. They they took the um, old Coke. They, they rebranded it as Coke Classic and saved the day and put it back on the shelves. And everybody was like, thank God. God, because there was a mad dash. People were going crazy trying to find old Coke because Coke was like, it's going away. We're going to replace it with this new um, Coke. And everyone was like, no. So it was like, you know, they had to go get their old Coke because they were never going to get it again. Coca-Cola realized, oh, shit, we fucked up. Let's put it back on the shelves and everything went back to normal. But apparently not, Carol, because this conspiracy is still very much alive today. What? Yes. People are still researching and talking about what happened in the 80s. Why would Coke do something like this? And there's come down to a couple different theories that are kind of interesting. It was a sales strategy in which Coke wanted their consumers to know what life would be like without original Coke. So they took it away to cause a spike in the demand. Um, but the Coca-Cola president at the time, Donald Keogh, said of this idea, quote, we're not that dumb and we're not that smart, end quote. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Thank you, Coke, for realizing yeah. what you are. They just made a bad decision and like and, always, yeah. like recently. <laughs> oh, no, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> so anyway, the second theory was that Coca-Cola wanted to replace the sugar in their drinks with high fructose corn syrup, which is a much cheaper sweetener and much worse for people's waistlines. Deadly. Very deadly. And of course, the biggest conspiracy theory was that Coke had to get rid of the fact that they used coca leaves to flavor the beverage, which is the same plant cocaine is derived yeah, from. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. 
The idea was Cook was under pressure from the DEA to get rid of this ingredient from their formula, a claim that the company has always disputed is not the case. No, I think they've had proof that it really was part of their Well, I'm just letting you know they're they're saying they're that's bullshit. Disputing. <laughs> I, well, in the timeline that I was in, Holly, mm, it definitely It definitely was proven was to be true. Proven to be true. And it's not but it's not that um, you know, yeah, they were probably using that in the drinks. Um, but it, I mean, it may be part of the caffeine that you get from coke is derived from cocaine i don't know i don't, don't know i think it made like a numbness down your throat mm -hmm. kind of a tingly numbing f effect but which isn't that is just what, the carbonation though which is what they use uh i i realized this uh with plastic surgery a lot of the doctors will pack the nasal cavities with cocaine whoa for a numbing agent it's not like the drug cocaine but it's a property of cocaine to right. use it as yeah. numbing right uh and it it works uh, in the same way as, a, you know, a really strong caffeine. Yeah. The uh, the states that cannot let this go are New Hampshire, Massachusetts, hmm. Rhode Island, Washington, D.C., which is not a state I know, and Mississippi. Uh, it's because Mississippi has a crazy name that nobody can spell. And so they need Coke to make sure that they stay awake long enough to get through that long spelling. That's right. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S that also has a jump rope song. Right? What is it? I don't know. Anyway, the next conspiracy theory. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. This one's weird because it's kind of a vague one. Black helicopters. No, no. That's real. That's absolutely real. You know there about are, black helicopters? There are black helicopters, blue helicopters. And if you see a white one with a red on it, it's going to a hospital. That's good, That's Carol. That's the flight for black. <laughs> good, good job. <laughs> I think there's army mm. colored ones too. I think you're right. These black helicopters are associated with the New World Order and the deep state. So obviously they are agents of the New World Order, as a lot of things are apparently. Um, they've also, though, been linked to sites where cow mutilations take place what? and UFO sightings. Mm -hmm. Black helicopters. Black helicopters. The helicopters are also believed to be from the United Nations as it prepares to invade America. What? That's weird. I know. Just with something I read, I'm like, I guess I'll include it, but that's bizarre. They're big black helicopters. Also, they are associated with the men in black. Mm -hmm. So the states that are most looking to the skies for these nefarious helicopters are Maryland, California, Missouri, and Illinois. I don't get it. Black helicopters, like maybe they're more prevalent in these states and that's why they're always looking at them and Googling them. I don't know. Well, I could see like maybe around Washington, D.C. area. Yeah. If you because Secret Service mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know, but they are definitely said to, like, a lot of people think that they're linked to the Illuminati and the New World Order and all that jazz. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they are, what the deal is. So the next one is more interesting, though, I think, um, and that is lizard people. Oh, no. Lizard people. No. Yes. No. The people of Washington State and Montana really like to look up the lizard people. Lizard people are actual people who are actually lizards, but mm -hmm. are adequately disguised as people. Their goal is world domination, and they have very close ties to the Illuminati. Again, of course, that is the core of the conspiracy body. So lizard people are probably like a leg of that. Maybe the I black thought, helicopters are like part of the arm. I thought lizard people were aliens. They are. They're oh. aliens, but they are here. They're lizard, a lizard alien race that are on Earth disguised as humans, but they're actually the ones that are trying to control everything. Okay. So that's what they're... And their goal is world domination, which means that they're close ties to the Illuminati or perhaps the Illuminati is all lizard people. I'm not sure. Well, we do have the reptilian brain. Right. Right. Because the idea was that these lizard aliens came here and mated with people, and that's why we have this reptilian brain. So, for example... A lot of famous people are actually uh, thought to be lizards, and that's why they're able to become famous, because they are actually aliens and they're in control of everything. Therefore, they can achieve fame. So some of the people that are accused of being lizards are... The royal family. Yes. Queen Elizabeth II, uh, George W. Bush, the Clintons, Bob Hope, Angelina Jolie, Madonna, Barack Obama, Donald Rumsfeld, and Katy Perry. 
So as the story goes, lizard people descended from the constellation Draco, which is actually shaped like a dragon. Draco. Draco. Like I said, they're from the constellation Draco. Yeah. And it's actually shaped like a dragon. <laughs> wow. And according to Vox.com, if you want to spot a lizard person, then you need to look for the following characteristics. Do you know what they are, Carol? I know you know one of them. Freckles. No. <laughs> oh, that was not on here. Oh, no. no. I know one of them. Yeah. You just said it. The reptilian brain? No. No. It's uh, a physical... Green... Green eyes. Green eyes is number one. Because green eyes are a mutation. Do you see my green eyes? Oh, my God. You are a lizard person. <laughs> no wonder you don't want to talk about them right now. Okay. What's another sign? Um, they have really good eyesight or hearing. Okay. That's not me. <laughs> they have red hair. But I think it's supposed to be um, unnaturally red. Like like they don't blend in enough red hair. Oh, so green okay. eyes and red hair. So all you gingers out there, we know, we're on to you. And we know you're ginger. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've well, said that many times. Yeah, right in my heart. Oh. Um, unexplained scars on the body and I couldn't figure out why they would have scars on their body maybe because they morphed into a human shape they love space they have low blood pressure I'm not sure how you would tell that by looking <laughs> at someone they have a smile where their bottom teeth show oh definitely not me so weird what about you smile oh <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose <laughs> I'm scared Holly uh, they have eyes that change size and they have eyes with abnormally sized pupils. And yeah. then say large or small, just abnormally sized pupils, whatever that means. Dilated. Probably. I guess. I guess. So if you're looking for lizard people, that's what you want to look out for. So if you're dating somebody with red hair and green eyes, maybe it's time to break up. Well, so what I have seen about this is that people show videos of these people like newscasters and stuff and they're speaking and then you can see their shift in and out of their bodies where you can kind of see their eyes switch into like snake eyes and oh, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's scary. And it's really spooky, but I really do think that can just be slow internet. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it could be, when it yeah. like morphs, when their eyes cloud over, and suddenly you see slits for eyes, and, and like, you that's see just the internet. That's you fine. see double vision where it like morphs. <laughs> I mean, that's like you remember like the, your TV set when the when the rods were getting old and the colors were all blending, and you'd be like, oh my god. Mork and Mindy look like aliens now. That never it's happened to TV. me, Carol. I think it just happened to you. Yeah. No, when your TV's going out and it's like, <laughs> that's never happened to you. No, actually, when I was growing up, we had, we did not have cable. We just had antenna. And so we could get ABC, CBS, NBC, but we could not get Fox. And I was always so angry because I wanted to watch that Johnny Depp. That explains a lot about you. Then. I know. <laughs> I wanted to watch Johnny Depp on 21 Jump Street, and I couldn't see him most of the time because the stupid antenna was all screwed up. That's really unfortunate. It's really frustrating. Johnny Depp. You missed Johnny Depp. I got to see him later in life on reruns, and my God, he was good looking. <laughs> Boy, man, back in those days. Anyway, I digress. Before uh, he next, became a pirate. Before he became a pirate. I do think everyone, if they have a chance, needs to somehow work on a set mm -hmm. or become an extra on a film. Yeah. Because it really shows you the side of it that isn't glamorous. It's not making films and TV shows is a completely unglamorous. It's really boring. Thing. It's pretty boring. It's hard work. It's super hard work and it's super stressful. It's long days like, you know. 18 hour days sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of politics or it depends on the set some people sometimes the set's really harmonious and everyone loves each other and gets along great in fact i've been told the horror movie sets are the best ones to be on because people are having so much fun making those movies i, I was on grim yeah that's right you were on grim yeah, yeah. several episodes and i did have a lot of fun I made a terrible zombie, uh, <laughs> and it was because they didn't realize that without I had to wear these special contacts to turn your eyes into slits into red. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my eyes yeah, just good one. naturally. Good one. Um, it was one of the episodes where all the zombies were going through a chain link fence and attacking Portland right after the voodoo doctor around. You know, was in putting them in a trance, and this was filmed in. Portland on one of the coldest days mm. and I had to be I don't know why they said I had to be in a suit while everybody else could be in leisure attire but they wanted me in a business skirt and a business you know 
jacket with high heels of course i can barely even walk on high heels as it is right and then they wanted me to wear these contacts which they didn't get me contacts in prescription oh god form. so i'm you know how blind i am yeah so you can't see now i couldn't see a thing i'm sure and the director kept being like girl what's wrong with girl you? girl number four girl, girl number four over there <laughs> you dance, in the prison suit dance girl <laughs> you're uh, like huh <laughs> yeah people my my husband is so sweet but he like watched that episode he's like i don't think you're they're gonna call you back i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny oh for those of you who want to see me up close on the show yeah what's um, the episode oh so one that i'm very proud of is my bar scene in grim episode i think it was season two uh episode number 16 called nameless i'm sitting at a bar and it's right before they blow up the bar are and... you just like a ghost no i'm dressed in a... <laughs> I'm dre... how are people gonna know what you look like carol <laughs> i'm dressed in a suit again i don't know what it is with them wanting to put me in business suits but i'm in a business suit again and she's got dark hair dark blonde hair yeah. yeah, and I'm arguing. I'm pretending like I'm mad and arguing, and I slam down my drink. And, yeah. And I thought, nobody's going to recognize me in this because it's just only like a few seconds. Yeah. So you ready for the last three conspiracy yeah, sorry. theories? sorry. I kind of went overboard no, on, it's the, okay. on the Grimm stuff. It's cool. It's interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah. What um, is it? So the last three are also tied, um, and they are Tupac is alive. The deep... Tup Tupac. Tupac Shakur is alive. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, the deep water horizon oil spill and the moon landing is fake. I was expecting the moon landing to be much higher up on the list. Yeah, that's one of the least ones, huh? It's one of the loose ones, yeah. So the first one is Tupac is alive. The people of New Mexico are really on board with this one, as you all know or maybe don't know. Tupac Shakur was a very uh, famous rapper who was supposedly died in 1996 in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. Right. However, the people of New Mexico believe he is still very much alive and that he faked his death and is now living out his life in New Mexico. That's probably why they like Interesting. this one. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's been sighted down there. Well, they, they that's what they said. They've seen him. So some guy is even making a movie about this and his, doc his um, name is Rick Boss. And he's filming this flick called Tupac, The Great Escape from UMC, which stands for University Medical Center. That's where he was taken in Las Vegas. Do you think Rick Boss is a fake name? It sounds fake. <laughs> it sure does. But anyway, Mr. Boss is quoted as saying, um, the family of Mr. Shakur is aware of the movie and they're okay with the title. So that should tell you more or less what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So anyway, there you go. Tupac's alive and live in New Mexico for all of you fans out there. Um, the Deepwater Horizon uh, conspiracy theory has really got the people of North Dakota hopping mad, which is weird considering that the Deepwater oil spill happened 1,600 miles away from them. <laughs> well, is there a lot of oil workers up there? In North no. Dakota? There isn't, is there? Is that where the pipeline was going to be? That's where it was going to be. That's where it was going to be. Okay. So maybe that's why they've been researching this. Yep. That's, that's probably why. what it is. Okay, good. So, of course, on April yeah. 20th, 2010, one of our deadliest calendar dates, please go oh. and listen to that episode if you want to know what I'm talking that's about. That's right. I'm glad we didn't have any big. There was a FedEx things. shooting. The FedEx oh. shooting happened on April. It was in that, that range. Okay. Yeah. On April 20th, 2010, the oil rig called Deepwater Horizon exploded and sank, resulting in 4.7 billion gallons of oil, filling the Gulf of Mexico for nearly three months and killing 11 of the crew. The theories abound about why this happened, including that the rig was attacked by eco-terrorists. It was attacked by an enemy sub from North Korea. It was attacked by our own government for political reasons. Or my favorite conspiracy theory is that a giant UFO was awakened from deep under the ocean and rose up to attack the oil rig. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Onward and upward. That was, yeah, North Dakota. And then the final one of the moon landing was fake. Do you know what state I haven't mentioned yet? Alaska. No, Alaska was oh. the first in the first batch. Uh, Florida. No. Um, oh, because that's where NASA is. Florida. I was really <laughs> hoping. Um, let me let me take another guess. Hawaii. Nope. Oh. Ohio. The people oh. of Ohio are looking up the moon landing was fake, and uh, that's where we are going to start. A guy named Bill Casing 
determined that we had never gone to the moon, as was told to the American people. It is believed that the moon landing was fake, as some of the images returned to Earth seem to be taken from prior NASA PR shoots. There are no stars in any of the footage. The shadows in the images do not fall in the correct alignment from the sun. There is no crater underneath the astronaut's rocket. And the last part, which is probably the most plausible part, is that the USA simply did not have the technological know-how at the time to go to the moon. Therefore, they had to fake it. The theory supports that it was actually shot on a soundstage. Okay, so my, you want to hear my theory on this? Yeah, what's your theory? So I've... I've listened to other podcasts regarding this and they're, you know, weighing in on the evidence to prove that it was faked. And and then, you know, there's the whole Stanley Kubrick um, theory that like he was trying to convey to everybody in his movies that the moon landing was fake uh, through symbolism and all of that. And he supposedly was the one that they hired to do the shooting of the moon pictures that were faked. And that's why he's trying to disclose that in his movie secretly. It's pretty fascinating. Oh, interesting. But my theory is that they did go to the moon. Okay. But if you look at the Apollo thing. Yeah. And I've I've actually laid my eyes on that thing. Mm -hmm. It looks like it would crumble under a paper clip. You mean the actual ship? You've seen the actual ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Smithsonian. Okay. So it looks like there's no way that thing went up to the moon. I as a kid, I was like. How is that possible? How this thing? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It was weird, but if if it did happen and they did get there, could it be that they just somehow destroyed the photos on accident? I mean, that's happened to me. I rolled down a sand dune one time and it got in my camera and all the film was destroyed. So it could have been something silly like that where the film didn't make it, so they had to Mm. reshoot everything. I've seen a photo that was put out by NASA as part of a PR photo shoot. And then you see the images that they say came back from the moon, and it's the same image. They've just kind of cut and pasted this astronaut. And it does look that way. Um, I don't know enough about the moon landing stuff have an opinion i haven't researched it that hard but yeah that was kind of compelling that it does look like that they just manufactured some photos to say look here they are floating around out in space and really it was just shot on a sound stage for their own pr purposes i i would like to believe that it's not true that we actually did go um but to this guy bill casing's point at the time that we came up with NASA, we did not really have the technology to get us to the moon. And suddenly we had all this ability to go. Didn't make a lot of sense that we were so ready to go so fast. And and there's a lot of... Um, it was a race to try and beat yeah, Russia Yeah, it was a race. First. Yeah. And, and we then, wanted to make the appearance that we were right. superior. Therefore, that gives credibility to us faking it because we wanted the Russians to believe that we had been there. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to go back and research it. I don't really know enough about it. Yeah, I I think it just comes down to, again, how many people involved would have to keep that secret. Exactly. And how how possible is it for this many people to keep a secret like this? I can't keep a secret for two days. About, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Everything. <laughs> I just if you if you really are asking that many people to keep a secret that big. That's hard. There better be some big payoffs involved. Or I see, under the I threat of see death. What happened. Under the threat of death. Yeah, you'd let I this can leak. see that. I will kill and, you. And I know military wise that classified information. I know uh, the people that have had to carry classified information with them under death threats. Yeah. Will not release that information. No. So why it, would you? It's not worth your life. So, yeah, it yeah. can be done. I would. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, talk about the moon yeah being fake. yeah do you think they're faking it about the ufos then i'm glad you brought that up carol that's an excellent segue because those are all my conspiracy theories and those are all the states and what they're looking at but the next part of paranormal and paranoid news i want to talk about is an update on the ufo stuff that's Yay. going on out in the world so nice segue there so as you know we've been talking about the fact that the COVID 19 disclosure is supposed to come out with 
what's really going on around UFOs. Of course, they're not going to disclose everything because the really juicy, meaty stuff is going to be too scary. They'll keep that under their hats, I'm sure. However, that being said, there are more UFO disclosures that have been coming out recently that I thought I would just give you guys a real quick update on, just in case you're interested. And I know aliens are not for everybody, so if if not, thank you for listening. But if so, please continue to hear us out. There have been some more sightings in March of 2019 by some Navy pilots. Off the coast of Virginia, three UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, as they're now called, uh, were seen in restricted airspace. These UAPs were seen in the direct flight path of a Navy jet. They were able to capture images of all three of these objects. One was called the sphere because it looks like just a round globe. Mm -hmm. Another was called the acorn because it looks like an acorn. I like that. (laughs) And the last one was called the metallic blimp, of course, because it looks Looks like like a metallic blimp. At least they're very consistent in naming them. They are. And I actually have a photo of them that I want to show you so you can see. Cool. There's the acorn oh, there. Oh, is that chemtrails? Sphere. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think what it's a is wa- that? I think it's a watermark. Oh, oh, oh. So that's an that's acorn, that's the sphere, and that's the blimp. Yep, it looks just like what it says. And in fact, the acorn looks pretty, they all look solid, but the acorn is the darkest one, and it mm-hmm. looks like you, really like there is an object. The right. sphere is almost translucent, and the blimp does look like a metallic blimp. Yeah. But they don't know, and probably tic-tac-shaped. But they don't really know what any of these objects are. One of the pilots caught these images with his iPhone, which is pretty close if you're catching it with an iPhone, right? right? Right. They saw the three objects within minutes of each other, and they saw them in that order, sphere, the acorn, and then the metallic blimp. Well, all within a couple minutes of each other. So they were all probably traveling together. Or being chased. Or being chased (laughs) by one of our (laughs) fighter jets. So this encounter was reported to the UAP task force, which we've talked about in prior episodes. After investigating the sighting and looking at still confidential sensor data, which we do not have access to, the UAP task force still has no idea what these objects are. George Knapp, of course, hero journalist George Knapp from Mystery Wire, has been following all of this very closely. So I go to Mystery Wire a lot to get the yeah. updates and stuff. He's quoted the um, in- Intelligence Committee chairman, Senator Mark Warner, as saying, quote, the military has seen enough things where they're actually now encouraging the pilots to report, That's which great. is good because before I think it was always like, just ignore it. Who cares? Or, or it's taboo to say that you saw a UFO. Well, they would always say bogey. Right. There's a bogey. Yeah, whatever that means. 10 o'clock. Just ignore it. Mm -hmm. But now they're actually starting to focus on it and go, what the hell are these things? And plus, they're showing up more now, I think. Right. And of course, Lou Elizondo, who is the guy who's been investigating all of these objects, both for the government and on his own, says, quote, this is a conversation about someone somewhere displaying beyond next generation technology in our controlled airspace. And there is not a whole lot we can do about it. And what I would do is submit to you that if we just take the word UFO out of it, just say Russia or China has the ability to fly into our airspace unimpeded and without detection within minutes of taking off, that's a real problem, end quote. And he's right. So months after that sighting, another sighting occurred, which showed UAPs that resemble flying pyramids that were recorded on a Navy warship in July of 2019 via infrared. Hmm. In this encounter, there were multiple objects seen that the Navy was unable to track. They swarmed around Navy ships, the USS Russell and the USS Omaha. There was also a dark speared shape that tracked the USS Omaha and eventually dove down and vanished into the ocean, which is probably where they live. That would then go with your theory of the deep water horizon. There you go. All the aliens are in the ocean. Don't you think it's weird that, do you remember uh, the Illuminati card deck that had all the different card playing scenarios of the New World Order on it? I don't think I saw it. I wanted it for my birthday, but you wouldn't buy it. It was like $300. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why. And you said no. I guess our friendship well, just wasn't worth it. It was to you. $300, and I had to join the Illuminati, and I had to give a vial of blood, oh, and I had on. to recite a verse. I'm worth it. You know it. it you You're know right. That's true. You're next right. year. Next year, we can always hope. I'll put it on the list. Actually, your birthday's yeah. coming up soon. Ah! So, I very guess. soon. Maybe I'll get it for you this year. It, it actually has passed. 
by the time this airs. Yeah, you're actually you're right. It will have passed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So either I have it or I don't, folks. What do you want to think? Mm, put some money down. Yeah. Get some bets but, going. But there is a card that has the deep water horizon on it. Oh, really? And this was done. Before this deck it was happened? done before <gasps> it happened. That's creepy weird. That's really creepy weird. Yeah. Maybe I should maybe we should get that game and play it on air sometime. Yeah, so these cards are pretty crazy. That how is, they depict things. That is very creepy. So, um, according to Lou Elizondo, the Navy, with all of its sophisticated technology, cannot determine what these things are, where they are from, or what they want. He also discounted the idea that they are just simply drones. He says, quote, I mean, look, we have counter drone technology on ships. I'm not going to say what they are, but we can knock them out of the sky. Drones are not a problem for us, end quote. He did say that if they do prove to be drones, then someone has technology that is far beyond what the U.S. has, which is also disturbing. So in July of 2019, about 100 miles off the coast of Los Angeles, three ships, the USS Kidd, the USS Rafael Peralta, and the USS John Finn reported seeing a few UAPs hovering above them. The visibility at this time was quite low. It was nighttime around 10 o'clock at night. But the Navy was able to tell that the drones were following the USS Kid, and they were able to keep up with its speed and stay hovered above it for at least 90 minutes, which is much longer than a regular drone's endurance of 30 minutes. As the drones hovered above the three ships, the ships went radio silent just to ensure that they were not being eavesdropped on by the hovering UAPs. Smart. Right. When the drones departed, the Navy destroyers were unable to track them despite having radar, thermal imaging, electrical optical systems, and many other sensors that would allow them to track them in low visibility and pick up any radio transmissions they could have been emitting. So mm-hmm. even with all of our technology, they could not track or figure out where these things were going or where they came from or what was happening. The following evening, they were surrounded by six drones that stayed with the ships for three hours. The Navy ships... A three-hour tour. It's a three-hour tour. (laughs) Maybe they're the drones from Gilligan's Island. The Navy ships contacted the Carnival Cruise Line to see if the drones were coming from their cruise ship in the area, but they denied that the drones were theirs. The Navy also contacted other ships in the area, but nobody fessed up to being the owner of said drones. The ships encountered the drones on two more nights, July 25th and July 30th, after an investigation was conducted by the Navy, the Coast Guard, and the FBI and other agencies. No information was found on where the drones came from, who sent them, or why they were there. That's the latest and greatest on um, the UFOs and what is being um, released to the public. They are not shy. They're becoming very forthcoming about the fact that these pilots are seeing things in the sky that they cannot explain. They have technology and abilities that we do not and that we cannot counteract, yeah. which is very disturbing. And I think for the most part, like according to like Lou Elizondo, that our technology and our abilities have pretty much been on par with that across the world. So to see some technology that is so far beyond us means that either there's some country that some either got some this crazy leapfrog in technology that they're way in front of us of the United States now and everybody else, or it is technology that is not of this earth. And that brings me to our last conspiracy theory. Which is? All of this is also staged to prepare us for an alien invasion Wouldn't called surprise me. Project Bluebeam. Look it up, guys. I've heard of that, but I don't. Is that what it is? That we're going to have a UFO invasion? Yeah, and it's supposedly all fake. It's all like Start, holographic. It's already happening and... now, looks like. Something's yeah. happening. Well, I mean, it's to, again, enslave humanity in fear, yeah. according to conspiracy theorists, so that they can right. then finish the final touches for their new world order. Awesome. And that brings us full circle, right? That full circle. We did it. Nice. So, well done, Holly. Yeah. So let's um let's take a look at for our tarot reading today. Yes. Why don't we look at the conspiracy theories that we covered, and we'll pick two. I'll pick one, and you pick one, and then we'll pull a couple cards on each to see which um which ones we think are if they're relevant or not, or, or not relevant if they're true or not. And the cards will will just ask if they're true. Yeah. So which one do you like? New World Order. 
uh, chemtrails, flat earth or new coke, black helicopters, lizard people, Tupac is alive, deep water horizon or the moon landing is fake. Um, I will take lizard people. <laughs> nice. I think that I like Tupac. Tupac is fun. Um, yeah, why not? Why not do Tupac? Yeah. Because we already know the New World Order is it's a true. <laughs> like we <laughs> we know that. that. Glam's Castle so, headquarters. Yeah, there right you go. There. there you go. And the moon landing was probably fake. Okay, we can agree with that. Deep Horizon is certainly an inside job. So Tupac is alive <laughs> is uh, is a good one. I think we should do it. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. Carol, tell us uh, your deck and your question, and what do you got? Absolutely. I've got the Lynn Strider's Journey, uh, created by Ciolo Thompson. Beautiful deck, Nicely I must done. say. Yeah, very nice. And uh, I drew the Knight of Wands reversed, the Six of Swords, and the Three of Cups. So that clearly tells me... What's your question? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I'm tell sorry. Us, tell us your question. Um, thank you. I was jumping ahead there. Yeah. My question is... Are lizard people real? Are they here? Okay. And I believe that, yes, they were. Um, so I believe that these cards depict at one time they influenced us, whether they were part of us. The Knight of Wands can be internal, uh, but it's reversed and it suggests travel and moving on. And okay. same with Six of Wards, Swords, sorry, Six of Swords moving out of trouble. Right. So I think maybe if they did inhabit bodies... Um, they've moved on. They okay. don't feel that that's necessary to do that anymore. And yep. they're no longer doing that yep. with people. Yep. Um, and I think this is hilarious. I drew the three of cups as the last card. Yeah. And so I'm making a joke here that three of cups usually means celebration or three's a crowd. Like right. if you're if you're possessed by something. <laughs> no, I'm but I like to take the interpretation that it's partying and celebrating. So maybe alcohol is very detrimental oh, to the um they don't like it, the alcohol. to the lizards makeup and chemistry. So Yeah, they might be like, You guys are too much drinkers. I don't want to morph into a human being form. I'm gonna be expected to drink and I don't like it. Well yeah. And they're really offended that tequila has a worm. In That's the bottle. probably what it is. So. Yeah, you're right. Awesome. Good job. Well I'm using the Everyday Witch Tarot by Deborah Blake and the art is by Elizabeth Alba. Thank you ladies for your contribution Thank to the you. tarot industry. Um, and I'm doing the question, is Tupac really alive? And I pulled three cards and I got Carol of the Devil, ah! the Three of Cups as well, and the Page of Cups. Now, to me, the devil is the nefarious plan. <laughs> the devil the is... cover up? Yeah. Uh -huh. The devil is, here's the plan. We're going to pretend like Tupac got shot and taken to the hospital and he died, but we actually got him out of there and to get him out of his um, life of celebrity. Perhaps okay. his life was under threat and yeah. this was a good way to protect himself is to fake Bow his out. death and get out of there. Then followed by the Three of Cups. That is a big celebration card. Huge celebration. Huge celebration. So he is celebrating the fact that he pulled it off. There you he go. got out of there. He moved to New Mexico and he's partying up hard because everyone thinks he's gone. He's probably got he released so many records after he died. He did. He's living off so much money. He doesn't have to be in the public eye anymore. It's the perfect plan. Don't you think it's interesting that we both pulled the. the I think it's interesting. Yeah. We both got the party cups. Yeah. Party hard. So he is celebrating the fact that he has gotten away with this. That he is, and there's a lot of support and family around him. I think that documentarian is correct that his family knows what's going on. So there's a lot of happiness and support and people are cheering and celebrating that that he has um, succeeded at this. And we end with the Page of Cups. And that is, I believe, he is starting a new artistic endeavor. I think he's becoming a painter. Oh. Because in this card, the kid is painting. So he is he is nurturing nurturing new artistic endeavors in his new life. Yeah, and pages can represent children too. So maybe yeah. he's starting a family. You might he might have kids all around him too. Yeah. Yeah. But they he probably changed his name and goes by a different name at this point. But on on these cards, what would you say, Carol, with the devil, the three of cups and the page of cups? 
Tupac's I'd alive? I'd say that's a yes. I'd say it's a yes. <laughs> the devil card specifically coming up would make me think yes, because the devil is all about getting away with something. The only thing that I think would be better about deception would be something like the magician. If the, that was there. The reverse magician or the seven of swords is another good one for mm-hmm. that. Getting away with something. Yeah. yeah. But this, I mean, the but devil, that works. Yeah, it works. Cool. Tupac. Hey, man. Good job. You fooled all of us. That's awesome. Yes. That's all we got for you guys. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye. I was right. Teddy Ruxpin. Carol's over here making jokes about foreskin. Yeah. But they denied having, uh, but they denied that they, the, fuck. The, you can do it. I yes, mean, you can. Five sentences you away. You can do it. Five sentences away. As the flames die down, do remain undaunted. Though all hitchhikers are ghosts and all dolls are definitely haunted. guys be sure to follow us on instagram our handle is at fireside phantoms if you have a spooky story you would like to share with us send it to firesidephantoms at gmail.com and you may hear it on a future episode <laughs>